Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech. In today's video, I'm going to be having a look at the KFA2 GeForce GTX 1070. Now, this card is based on the reference design. It does have a blower type fan where it'll exhaust all the hot air out of the back and kind of suck in from the main fan there. So, it might not be one of the quietest um, cards in the world. It might not be one of the best looking, but you're getting the 1070 chip and this should perform pretty damn well. So, I'm really excited to get into the benchmark. So, I'm going to be taking you. I'm going to be taking you around the card, show you all of its kind of features, then we're going to get into them benchmarks, some at 1080p and then some at 4K. I'm going to be testing some games like Battlefield 4 and also Killing Floor 2, GTA 5, games like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. To get started, that's a very quick overview of what you get in the box. On top you find two manuals, followed by a disc with an outdated driver and a power conversion cable. This particular one converts two Molex connectors to a single PCI Express 8-pin connector for the card. And lastly is the GPU inside an anti-static bag. Onto the card, the card's dimensions are 26.7 by 11.1 by 3.8 centimeters thick, dual slot. As for the cooler strapped to the card, it features a single blower style fan which blows through an aluminium heatsink inside, pushing the hot air straight out the rear of the card. The shroud is plastic and quite frankly doesn't look too pleasing, however KFA2 have applied a red plastic graphic to the card to somewhat heal the eyesore. This cooler design is one of the least efficient and is most likely to be the loudest as well. However, it's not all downfalls. It's also one of the cheapest designs and for people not bothered by a little edge noise or people that are going to be applying water blocks in the future, it's pretty ideal for them. As for the power requirement of the card, there's a single 8-pin connector on top. KFA2 recommend a minimum of a 500 watt PSU, however I'm pretty sure you can get away with much less than that. This card also supports 2-way SLI, but I would only recommend going with this config if you have already owned a single 1070 for some time. The GTX 1080 would be my personal recommendation if you have a larger sum of money to spend on graphic horsepower. As for some further specs, the card features 1920 cores clocked at 1506 MHz with a boost of 1683 MHz. The card also features a whopping 8GB of GDDR5 memory sat on a 256-bit memory bus. As for the outputs, the card features a single DVI port, a single HDMI port in addition to three display port outputs. Anyhow, I think it's about time we install the card and get playing some games to see how it performs. Just like before when I took a look at the GTX 950 and also the AMD R9 380, I'm going to be doing some live benchmarking with the card. This is going to be on my standard test rig with an i7-4790K clocked at 4.2GHz and 16GB of memory. First up, jumping into Battlefield 4 with the high preset set, this card looks to be doing very well drawing 131 FPS average. Very respectable for a card of this price and was personally quite impressed. Switching the graphic settings to Ultra, of course we see a decrease in frames, however still a very high number at 115 FPS average, again passing my expectations for sure. As for 4K at high settings, the card does relatively well, pushing 70 FPS on average, and I was very surprised that this could push more than 60 FPS on Battlefield 4. Moving on to a slightly more demanding title, GTA 5. Running the game at high settings first with 2 times MSAA, the card seems to be doing very well at 93 FPS as you can see in the gameplay. Backing out of the game and launching it up again with all the settings now max but MSAA on times 4 instead of times 8, the card was able to push 77 FPS. Moving on to my last test at 4K with high settings with 2 times MSAA, the card does surprisingly well being able to push 55 FPS on average. Just like Battlefield 4, this is a very good frame rate and is more than acceptable if you wish to play at 4K. Next up we have Need for Speed 2016, which is a very well optimised game favouring Nvidia cards. First up we have all settings set to high at 1080p with FX8 turned on. The 1070 can output 117 FPS on average. Very impressive. Keeping it 1080p and raising the settings to maximum with TAA set, we see a decrease in frames to 103 FPS, still a very healthy number. As for 4K results, running the game at medium settings with HBAO and FX8 anti-editing turned on, the card was able to output 43 FPS. On to Killing Floor 2 with the Ultra preset set at 1080p, the 1070 flies over itself, averaging around 149 FPS. Very impressive, although Killing Floor 2 does have a hard FPS limit of 150 FPS, nor is it an extremely demanding title, despite it looking pretty damn nice. As for changing the resolution to 4K and keeping the settings at Ultra, the card is able to deliver a similar result to Nuclear Speed 2016 and pushes out 49 FPS on average. Pretty impressive, as you can't play most titles at maximum settings with the 1070. For both tests, the NVIDIA Flex settings were disabled. 
Lastly, onto an actual benchmark, in Valley at 1080p with the Extreme HD preset set, the card was able to deliver 91 FPS on average after testing the card four times. As for the temperatures, the card hit a maximum of 76 degrees throughout all of my testing, while staying surprisingly quiet for a reference design with a fan speed of 49%, and I've had some pretty loud cards in my time, without sounding like an old man that is. Take a listen. So guys, there are the benchmarks and my review overall. To conclude, this card, it might not be the best looking, but it does perform very, very well. And one thing that I'm really surprised about are the temperatures and also the noise levels. Now, I didn't include noise levels nearer to the end of the video. And I must say, this thing is stupid quiet. Like, stupid quiet. It's, it's really surprising. Um, for a reference cooler and just like the GTX 950 that I checked out I was really surprised that was really quiet but I think architecture now of, of, of GPUs has just become so efficient that you can just shove blower style uh, coolers on graphic cards and then be relatively quiet just because of just the architect is efficient. This is really quiet and actually quieter than, than one of my third party MSI GTX 770s I had so yeah, this is this is a good card. It's a cheap 1070. It might not be the best looking, as I've said, but it's a very good performer and can play games at 4K. So if you're looking for a cheap 1070, I will recommend this just based on its sheer performance and the very low price tag compared to some aftermarket 1070s, which uh, so, some of them can get very, very expensive. But this is a great card and I would recommend it. So yeah, there we are. So you find Amazon links in the good old description, also a link to KFA2's website to view some specs and, uh, and some other photos of the product. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye. For people not bothered about the extra noise or that are basically going to be spare the specs, spare the specs, yes. As for some further specs, the card features 19,000. Oh, imagine that 19,000 cores. Fucking hell. Why can't I read today?